Hey everyone. Um, so if you've been keeping up with my uh, recent posts on Twitter, you'll know that I've been uh, uploading a lot of pictures of a project that I've been working on. And uh, now I think I'm at the point where I'm ready to uh, show it off on video. And here it is. Uh, it is a clock and uh, it uses um, planar gas discharge displays, also known as panaplex displays. And uh, this is what they look like. They are, uh, they basically, um, you know, are little tub shaped things with uh, glass on the front and a very interesting pin arrangement on the back. And they're filled with uh, some sort of mixture of neon gas. They're basically like uh, Nixie tubes. Um, but they use a seven segment arrangement instead of uh, having, you know, the cathode shaped like individual digits. Um, these uh, go back to probably the early 70s. Um, similar uh, displays were used in um, almost all pinball machines uh, from the 1970s and 80s. Um, and uh, I just think they look awesome. And I want to uh, start off by showing you some of the features uh, of this clock here that I built. So uh, the first thing you'll see is that every other minute it will do this cool little animation and show you the day of week and date, as well as the full date with the year. Um, as you could tell, uh, you know, since it's hard to display letters like M and W and T on a seven segment display, uh, I had to get a little bit creative. Um, now another thing you'll notice is that there are no no buttons on it at all. I'll turn it around and you can see here on the back, no buttons and nothing on the bottom either. Instead, there are two, ah, <laughs> spoiler alert. Instead, there are two capacitive touch sensors, one on the left and one on the right. And if I, touch either of them, it cycles through the various display modes. Again, you can see my weird looking M there. Um, if you hold down the left button or sensor, it brings you into the menus and we'll uh, step through those menus in just a moment. As you can see here, all kinds of fun options. Uh, if you hold down the right touchpad for about a second, the display will fade out and uh, the clock will basically go to sleep. Shuts off the high voltage supply to the Panaplex uh, modules. Um, so, you know, it will uh, preserve the lifetime of the displays if, you know, no one is in the room or you're asleep or something like that. And when the, when the machine's asleep, just tapping any sensor will bring it back Wake it back up. We'll walk through the menus now. So uh, I just showed you the, uh, the sleep functionality. I can put it basically on persistent sleep where um, the display is basically normally off until it's woken up by a touch and then it will automatically shut off after about 10 seconds. And uh, if we wait just a little bit more, you should see it fade out. There you go. And let's put that back. So there is also another option. There is scheduled sleep. I'll get into that in a moment where you can actually have the display turn on and off at various times of the day for each day of, of the week. Uh, our next step through the menu uh, shows us setting the time and uh, basically, you press the right touchpad to change a value or uh, enter a submenu, and you press the left touchpad to advance. Now I'm just kind of messing with the time. Uh, tap again. This brings us to setting the date. Behaves kind of the way you would expect here. It, you know, makes sure all the... Uh, dates are validated so it won't try to uh, it won't accept an input like February 31st or something like that uh, it is leap year aware um, 
and it has, uh, you know, it, it basically goes all the way up to 2099. You can select either a 24 hour or a 12 hour display. And in the 12 hour display, uh, it will show you a P or an A on the end, whether it's AM or PM. And let's see, where are we now? Let's put that back to 24 hours. Uh, it has automatic daylight savings time correction. So at, um, well, it's programmed for the US only, but um, if it's set to auto at 2 a.m. on you know the uh, dates of the daylight savings time uh, spring and fall transitions, it will uh, set the clock one hour ahead or one hour uh, back respectively. And uh, as mentioned before, all of the daylight savings time uh, dates are programmed uh, up to the year 2099. I'm sorry, I just said daylight savings time. I know it's daylight saving time. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have a couple of basically cosmetic options. You can have the time separators either flash or be solidly lit, or you can shut them off entirely. Let's put them to solid. You also have a number of different styles because there are no actual colon dots. So you can choose between, you know, this weird pseudo colon thing or a middle dash or a decimal point or this other pseudo colon thing. Uh, for the date, you also have your choice of either a dash separator or a dot separator. And uh, the final item in the menu allows you to set the schedule um, if the device is set to scheduled sleep you can um, basically specify for each day sunday through saturday um, at what time you want uh, the clock to wake up and what time you want it to go back to sleep or you can have it on for 24 hours solid or off for 24 hours um, and off means in sleep mode, and it can still be woken up just by touching the sensor. It doesn't completely shut off. Um, so now that the date and time are totally mangled, let's go and look at the schedule options. So under set schedule. Um, so for every day, you basically have a choice of four options. Here is the uh, menu that allows you to specify the uh, scheduled behavior for every day. The uh, underline dash means 24 hour sleep. Then you can choose between one or two um, time ranges or you can um, have it uh, on continuously for 24 hours. And I'm really doing the best I can trying to show these weekday uh, abbreviations. Um, <laughs> Uh, and in addition to uh, changing the days, you can also go in here and change the scheduled time ranges. So this would be from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So if I were to bring this into my office and I wanted the clock to turn on or off, you know, basically during uh, the times when I'm in the office, you can do that. And that uh like i said you can do the same thing with schedule uh schedule number two and i believe that brings us to the end of the menu so uh of course i will uh take it apart i will show you the construction i will talk a little bit more about the circuitry and stuff and let you see what's inside of it so the uh, first thing we'll do is we'll take off the front panel. Uh, everything is uh, laser cut. The front panel is acrylic and the sides are made of walnut. And uh, I've put a little piece of electrical tape on the back here to mask out the uh, keep alive cathodes. And those are basically just little cathodes that are on all the time. Uh, say if you were to have a digit with <clears throat> no cathodes on at all and you went to go turn on one or more cathodes uh, it might not be as responsive it may take a little bit of time before those segments would actually turn on so having the keep alive cathodes on basically makes the display as responsive as uh, possible so i have uh, popped off the 
lid and I will just turn it over like this. Uh, everything is press fit. There's no glue, no screws um, holding the enclosure together. And you can see I'm just using some uh, copper tape for each of the touch sensors. And then if we um, just adjust our camera slightly and peer down inside, uh, what we have here is um, basically a four board arrangement and actually let's just turn let's turn the entire thing around so you can see the um, back side of the display board so as I said uh, basically we have four boards there's the main uh, MCU board here um, there's the display board here and then there are these two uh, I call them wing boards, which are mounted at right angles to the display board and held in place just with uh, solder joints. And um, the two wing boards contain the uh, cathode drivers. They are uh, TPIC 6B595 high voltage shift registers. And the uh, microcontroller board in the middle here, this uses a uh, PIC. 16F1508 with uh, 4K of uh, ROM space and 256 bytes of RAM. Over here, this is a little uh, real-time clock breakout board from SparkFun. It's got a DS3234, um, highly accurate real-time clock chip. It's got a coin cell battery backup. And over here, we have the high voltage power supply. Um, that is a um, module made by a company named Taylor Edge. I think John Taylor is his name. It's a model 1363 high voltage supply. It, uh, in this case, is taking a five volt input and stepping it up to about 165 volts. Um, and uh, I want to be very, very careful here because as you can probably see, this thing is Bodge City. Um, I made each of the uh, four boards um, on an other mill, uh, made them out of FR1 single-sided uh, board, and they are very prone to having traces break or um, have pads lift when you solder them. So this whole thing is basically held together with Kapton tape and 32 gauge wire. And uh, the reason why I did not follow the EEV blog motto of don't turn it on, take it apart, is because if I took it apart, I there's a chance I might not be able to get it back together again without having to rework it. Um, so here's a little, a little peek at the uh, inside. These um, two screw terminals there are what hold the power cord in place. Uh, it's just a regular USB-A cable that I chopped the uh, end off, so it just takes, you know, five volts from a regular uh, USB charger, and uh, it's pretty much it. So I will put the camera down, and then I will uh, bring out the whiteboard and kind of show you what the uh, uh, block diagram of the system looks like. So the uh, system isn't terribly complicated. Um, uh, the three uh, display modules are here at the top, and those are basically they're basically designed for multiplexing. Each digit has a uh, common anode, and then each of the segments uh, has its own um, cathode. Uh, it's not technically a ten-digit display; it's a nine and a half-digit display because it's got this plus minus one over here, and to save on uh, pin requirements, uh, instead of uh, scanning across all 10 digits individually, I've basically wired them up in pairs. So at any given time, uh, two digits are, uh, two digits, digits, wow, that's a hard word to say, are on. Um, that also means that we have uh, 16 uh, cathodes going into the uh, driver shift registers. Um, and uh, those, along with the real-time clock, are just connected to the PIC via uh, SPI bus. 
Um, then we've got an array of uh, high voltage transistors that allow the uh, microcontroller to switch the digits on and off. And the um, microcontroller uh, can also turn the high voltage supply on and off. Uh, so when the uh, clock is going into sleep, it actually is shutting off the uh, high voltage supply and shutting off the uh, 165 volts going to the uh, drive transistors and to the display. Um, the uh, capacitive touch sensing um, is uh, interesting. I use the technique described in a microchip app note that um, basically allows you to um, perform capacitive touch sensing uh, using only an ADC without any kind of special uh, touch sense peripherals. Um, it is called... Um, C, well, the acronym is CVD. I will put a uh, link in the description to the actual technique. Um, it's really cool. It works pretty well. And I couldn't explain how it works for the life of me. Uh, it works. It's cool. Uh, <laughs> and, and that's pretty much it. Um, software is written in C. It's fairly straightforward. Nothing to write home about. Um, and of course, down here we have the 3 volt. Uh, backup battery that's connected to the real-time clock. Um, so uh, yeah, that's basically it. And uh, I want to thank you all for watching and follow me on Twitter for updates on future projects and fun stuff like that.